Oh, hey there. I didn't see you. Sorry to creep in all close like this, get all all up in your business, you know, all up in your bubble and everything. But uh, just wanted to have a quick chat. Nothing too serious. Just, you know, just me and you. We don't need everybody else involved in this. It's just me and you. Whether behind the wheel or supporting their teammates, Street Outlaws drivers are always committed to giving their 100% regardless of how dangerous the situation might be. That being said, being so passionate and competitive about what they do also means that some personal feelings are eventually involved. While drama and feuds aren't a rare occurrence for Street Outlaws drivers, in some cases, these have had serious consequences which have negatively affected the careers of those involved. But could this be the same case for drivers Big Chief and Precious Cooper and the feud allegedly going on between them? Stay here to know all about the problems between the two, whether or not their beef resulted in the former's exit from the show, and also get a hold on more eyebrow-raising issues between other cast members of Street Outlaws. There's always some kind of drama waiting for those involved in street racing, especially when money and competitiveness play a role. While it's no different for drivers in Street Outlaws, in recent times an alleged feud between Big Chief and Memphis-based driver Precious Cooper has had fans of the show quite flabbergasted and confused. According to some online fan reports, there was indeed a confrontation between the two drivers in early 2022, during the early stages of filming America's List Season 2. Apparently, one of them didn't agree with the show's rules, prompting an argument with the other driver, resulting in Big Chief's girlfriend, Jackie Brash, becoming involved as well. The issue ended when Big Chief and Jackie left the scene to return home and effectively abandoned the rest of the season. While taking such a brash decision might seem unlikely from Big Chief, in a YouTube video, he admitted that he was unpleasantly surprised during the first driver meeting for America's List and things didn't improve as the night went on until he finally left. But he didn't mention the alleged issue between himself and Precious. Whatever prompted the altercation between them, it was serious enough to cause drama and tension among the cast. Following Big Chief's exit from America's List, the issue prompted many online rumors which identified the cause of his exit as his fight with Precious on that fateful night of January 2022. However, in a YouTube video shared by Big Chief in March of that year, he confirmed that the real reason he left his spot in the show he helped to create was his disagreement with the changes made to it, especially in regards to how a pre-season process was instituted for drivers to appear in the show, and the way that apparently affected the ratio of drivers from different cities. In the same video, Chief said that despite wanting to discuss the rules with other racers and come with an agreement which wouldn't affect anyone in a negative way, he left the first driver's meeting with a bad taste in his mouth. Without getting into too much detail, there's a lot of things that have changed the way I think about street outlaws, he said, but denying the claims about him leaving for not having money or not winning a race were false. His problems weren't limited only to America's list, as Big Chief also left the Street Outlaws franchise altogether, but it's clear that his passion for racing was still intact, regardless of the disagreements. Leaving America's list also meant that Big Chief's spot as race master was vacant, but not for long. That spot was ultimately left to Sean Murder Nova Ellington, which isn't a surprising choice considering his history with the show. I'm not all that surprised at who they picked. Everyone on the show respects and admires Sean for his years in the game, as Big Chief told Reality Tidbit. Also, according to Chief, choosing Murder Nova would benefit the team in a way he didn't feel he could. Things change, people change, and I think his personality is much better suited for the race master position than I am, he said. While this situation might not be every fan's cup of tea, it's for certain that the dynamics and format of Street Outlaws has changed forever. Much speculation has arisen about the current state of Big Chief and Murder Nova's relationship, given how both men were good friends but have certainly strayed away from each other in recent years. While this has been evident for fans for quite some time, no one really knew what happened between them until Big Chief cleared up the situation himself, as he said in an interview with Sim ABC XYZ channel on YouTube, 
Several factors such as Street Outlaw's exhausting filming schedules and the hardships faced on the road eventually reflected on Sean emotionally. At the same time that Murder Nova made his family a priority in his life, instead of racing, Big Chief had made racing his biggest focus, and that alone had put a big strain on their bond. It's not by choice that I'm a lone wolf. It's just, I'm a jerk. I only know one thing, and that's racing for a living, as Big Chief admitted in a later interview with Dragzine. While it couldn't be said that there's a beef going on between Big Chief and Murder Nova, it's for certain that the drivers have taken separate paths in life. Born in Kentucky but raised in Oklahoma, Justin Shear has felt a deep passion for racing since he was only a young child. Growing up so close to Route 66, the young Justin would ride his bike there just to watch the races, and many times also accompanied his parents to races, as the passion for speed ran deep in their blood as well. That being said, growing up with a not-so-good money situation stopped Justin from dreaming of dedicating his life to racing. My family, and where we come from, there just wasn't the opportunity for us to have a trailer and go hit up two or three tracks a month, he told Dragzine in 2021, saying that his family had just enough money to keep the car running back then. Their love for racing pushed them to join the local scene, using whatever he had at the time. Instead of buying a $4,500 trailer, or a Suburban, or a truck to pull it, we could spend that money on parts and go out and race all weekend, he said in the same interview. Years later, he saw himself starting the legendary The List, and bringing enough popularity to street racing for street outlaws to start. While difficulties were a rare thing for Justin, he learned well that those were never enough to deter him from doing what he loved. As with every other racer, Justin Shear loves to be behind the wheel just for the thrill that only speed and competitiveness can bring. However, if there's something else which inspired Big Chief to push his limits and take Oklahoma's racing to the next level, it was to make racing and cars cool once again. As he affirmed in an interview with Drag Illustrated in 2015, Growing up seeing many great cars on Route 66 really left an impression on Justin. Recalling some iconic modified muscle cars such as Mustangs and Camaros, these cars were the greatest both in performance and in looks, and set a high standard back in his teens which unfortunately changed over the decades. Everybody's getting their parents hand-me-down cars, and instead of getting Monte Carlos and Regals and Mustangs, cool cars, they're getting Toyotas and Honda Accords, he said. While not everyone shares Justin's opinion in regards to modern cars, it's clear that he isn't alone when it comes to bringing back the so-called car culture. Since the beginning of Street Outlaws, nothing has stopped Justin and his fellow Oklahoman drivers from making cars cool again, and inspiring others to follow that road as well. Besides passion and a strong commitment to racing, Justin Shearer's inventive ways have taken him to where he is today. Back in the early 2000s, Justin was already known as Big Chief in Oklahoma's racing community, and eventually started the list and the website named after it, which ranked racers every week and became a local and later wider attraction. Although in the first years, dozens of drivers competed to enter the list, most of them were acquaintances and friends. With time and practice, members of the list figured out how to improve their cars and level up their ranks, but little did they know that they were soon to be put under the spotlight thanks to a producer from Nebraska whose website 1320 Video launched the group to internet stardom by turning their race videos viral. Soon a TV producer approached Big Chief and the group, who were understandably unsure about exposing their racing escapades for the world to see. Besides their initial skepticism, no one really had faith in the show back in its beginnings as Big Chief confessed in an interview with Drag Illustrated in 2015. Nevertheless, Street Outlaws finally saw the light of day in mid-2013, and no one could stop it afterwards. Those who have been closely following Big Chief and the rest of Street Outlaws cast are surely aware that many of them have families and a whole life away from the track. So perhaps unsurprisingly, life took a turn for Big Chief when in 2017, he split from Alicia with whom he had been since his late teens and finally married in 2006, soon welcoming two sons. While not much is known about the reasons leading to their breakup, 
Back when it happened, it was strongly rumored that infidelity on Justin's part had split the marriage apart. Big Chief himself denied these claims during an episode of the now discontinued podcast, The Chief and Sean Show. There have been many criticisms and people mad at me for something I didn't do, he said, explaining that he had been having trouble with his now former wife for a while before finally filing a divorce. Following a split from his former wife, Big Chief started dating Jackie Brash around 2018. Officially announcing their relationship later that year during an episode of his podcast, The Chief and Sean Show. Now I'm looking at my future. I have plans and Jackie is my future, he said. Although in the beginning, the couple kept a low profile online, probably due to the ill-intended rumors which surrounded their relationship. In recent years, Big Chief hasn't shied away from praising her on social media and in interviews, pointing out how she shares the same passion for speed and cars as himself, including how she wants to drag race for a living, as he told Dragzine in 2021. For her part, Jackie doesn't have any active social media accounts, but it's known that she's also been racing for her entire adult life. While accessing updates on the couple's everyday life is quite difficult, Big Chief's YouTube channel, Midwest Streetcars, sometimes shares their adventures together behind the wheel or doing mechanical work to their cars. While mixed reviews aren't rare for reality TV shows, the illegal aspect of the races featured in Street Outlaws has been a source of debate since its premiere in 2013. Back in 2015, the show even received a letter from the National Hot Rod Association, which warned about the dangers of street racing and how it could lead to the revocation of the NHRA competition license of those featured in the show. The letter was posted online, causing an uproar in the racing community and from fans. But Big Chief admitted that his intent in showing the letter wasn't necessarily to make fun of the organization, but to enlighten people who wanted a street race about the possible difficulties involved with it. Street racing will always have dangerous consequences, and you have to be okay with that to do it, he wrote. Though, as far as it's known, no licenses have actually been revoked. Now that he's no longer part of Street Outlaws, it's unknown if Big Chief's future projects include the show or if he's just done with TV. That being said, wherever life takes Justin Shearer next, it's undeniable that he's left a mark in the US street racing scene by standing up to defend his passion, even when difficulties and criticism seem to be insurmountable. Okay. We're out of here. Anything else? Mm -mm. Way to go. Well, bye. You should say it this time. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you back tomorrow.